Hey guys, was geht ab and welcome to this video. And as you can see, I'm in a new location. I moved into a new room and I'm very excited to change a lot of stuff in the background. You will see it in the following upcoming videos. But other than that, today we are talking once more about color grading. And as you know, that's my favorite topic. But today is a special day because today we are aiming for the curves. And the curves are the most important and the most advanced tool in color grading and color looks and everything like this so it's very, very important to understand them but i also know that a lot of you guys kind of avoid them because they hate them and that's very sad because they're really really good and they can help you a lot and once you understand them and once you get used to it it's pretty amazing so yeah let's not waste any more time and let's get started All right, and here we are in Photoshop and before we get started with any theory part or whatever, we want to start with a little jump start. So we want to get right into it and just open a new adjustment layer curves. And of course, you can't only do this in Photoshop, you can also do this in Lightroom. So let's just switch over to Lightroom. And if your curve looks like this, you're good to go. You can just change the channels by clicking on RGB and switching to the other channels. And if your curve looks like this, just click on this little icon in the right corner and you will switch to the right curves. Okay, here we are back in Photoshop and the first thing you want to do is to click on RGB and switch to the blue channel. Then grab the left anchor point and bring it up a little bit and the right anchor point down a little bit. Then switch to green and basically do the opposite. So the left anchor point a little bit to the right and this one a little bit to the left maybe like yeah let's say like this and then the same thing with the red one a little bit to the right a little bit to the left and that's already it there we are in like a couple of clicks that was super easy and we already got quite a cool look so that's something that always works it's the most basic thing ever but as you can see, it works. Now, of course, if you just opened the curves the first time, this was a little bit fast for you. So let's get back a couple of steps and see how these curves actually work. Okay, I just created a couple of layers, as you can see. Um, don't worry about them yet. I will use them later to explain it a little bit more in detail. First of all, we create a new layer and choose curves. And the first thing you need to understand is that what you see in the background is actually in the histogram of the photos. So basically on the left side are all your dark tones, all your shadows, every area that is pretty dark basically. Then in the middle are the middle tones, like for example her skin. And then on the right side are the highlights, for example the clouds. And then there's this diagonal that goes from the left button corner to the right top corner. And this basically means zero. So if you see this, this means just no changes at all. This is basically zero. Now if the line goes down a little bit. For example, if we drag it down, it means that you darken the photo because it's below this standard line. And if you drag it up, you will brighten the photo because it's above this standard line and then you have those anchor points for example the one i just created here and you can create as many anchor points as you can imagine and if you want to delete them just drag them out of the little uh, window out of the curves and they will be deleted now to make this a little bit easier i just switch to this simple gradient from pure white to pure black and now we have our standard line here um, untouched basically uh, now for example if we create an anchor point if and if we drag it up the white area will get larger so there will be more bright areas in the photo and if we drag it down obviously the black areas will get larger so there will be more darker areas in the photo but still we will still have some highlights here and we will still have some very very shadow dark spots okay let's bring this back Let's create two more anchor points. And now we basically have three anchor points, right? One for the dark areas, one for, for the middle tones, and one for the bright areas. 
if we drag down the anchor point for the dark areas, you would see not really that the dark areas are getting much larger than before, but they're getting darker, right? And then if we brighten up the highlights, you would see that the highlights obviously get brighter. And what we basically just created is more contrast. And of course, if we enable this layer and if we take a look at the final photo, you will see that we created a hell lot of a contrast. And of course, this would be too much, but just so that you can see what we just did. Now you might be saying, but Paul, that's all cool, but you didn't really use this RGB channel when we did the head start. And that's absolutely right, because this RGB channel, as you can see, not really influences the colors. It only influences the brightness, right? Of course, if you add contrast, the colors will get more saturated, but that's basically a side effect. You can't really decide, okay, I want the shadows more red, more bluish, more yellow, whatever. So the RGB channel is basically for the brightness, for the darkness, for the whole exposure of your image. Now let's delete those anchor points really quick and get into the colors because that's where the full potential of the curse is. Now, for example, let's switch to the blues. And we basically have the same thing here, okay? So the dark areas are on the left side, midtones, and then the highlights. The big difference is that you now not only influence the brightness of the image, but also the colors, because now you can take over the blue tones and for example, in Greece, the blue tones, so the whole image will get more bluish. And if you take the whole curve down, the whole photo will get more yellow. But why exactly is it yellow? And this is really important to understand. And that's why I am gonna explain it to you on the color circle. Because what we have here is here the blue tones, right? And what happens when you take down the blue tones is basically the opposite side of the color circle will get, let's say, stronger. So if you take down blue, yellow will get stronger. If you take down green, this purple, pinkish, whatever this tone is, will get stronger. And then if you take down red, you will have cyan getting stronger. So always keep this in mind, how this works, and maybe print one of those color circles and place it next to your editing computer. or However you do it, you just need to keep this in mind that if you take down blue, you will get more yellow and so on and so forth. Now let's get back to the image and let's try to understand what we did in the beginning in the head starts. So we started with dragging the left corner up and the right corner down or the right anchor point. So what we basically did here in the highlights, we added yellow tones, right? Because we took down blue tones in the highlights, so we will get more yellow tones in the highlights. And the second thing we did is we added blue tones in the shadows, so we basically will get more blue tones in the shadows. And another little thing you need to notice is that there are not really any changes in the middle of the line or curve or however you call it. So the line perfectly hits this little crossing point um, exactly in the middle, so there will be no changes in the midtones. And then we jumped over to the green tones and did the opposite thing, right? So we took away green tones in the shadow and let's just jump to the color circle. If we decrease the green channel, we'll get more of this pinkish look in the shadows and that's exactly what we just got. And then we also increased the green tones in the highlights. So we'll get this little bit greenish tone in the highlights. And then we switched over to the red tones as a last step and basically did the same thing then in the green tone. So we increased the red channel in the highlights and decreased it in the shadow. And that's already it basically. We have this bluish tone in the shadows and this yellow tone in the highlights. Now you might be wondering, well, why did you use all the curves and why didn't you use only the blue channel? Because that would basically be enough, right? We would take down the blues in the highlights so we'll get yellow highlights and then we will increase the blue tones in the shadows so we will get bluish shadows. Of course, that's correct, but if you do it in all channels, you will have a little bit more control because, for example, let's go back to the image and let's say, okay, I like the blues in the shadows, but I would like to have it a have a little bit more red in it. Now, what we can do is we can just jump into red and 
pull it back a little bit. And as you can see, now we have a little bit more red in the shadows. So it's a little bit easier to calibrate the whole thing. And that is basically already everything you need to understand about the curves. But before I end this video, I want to give you a kind of a real world example how I would use the curves in the most cases. So let's just click on this little custom preset thing here and click on default so that we reset the whole curve. The most popular thing to do with the curves is an S curve. So you basically create an S curve what we created in the beginning that adds contrast in every single channel. So let's do this really quick. And of course you want to create the same curve in every channel. So in red, blue and green so that you basically see no changes in color. And, and if you want to make sure that your curves are really exactly the same, you can actually put in the numbers here and just copy them to your other curves and you will have the exact same curve. And now, as you can see, we didn't really change the colors, but of course we added contrast, right? Because we didn't every curve the same. So yeah, we didn't really change the colors, but if we darken all channels and if we brighten all channels in the highlight, we will of course get contrast. Now, if you don't want to have this contrast because we actually want to create cool color looks, right? We don't want to add a lot of contrast. You can just create an opposite curve in the RGB channel. And as you can see, of course, now I didn't do it exactly correct. So I will see some changes, but it's basically the same photo than before. And I actually saved myself a preset where I did it exactly right. I call this balance two. And if you look at this now, there will be no change at all. If I apply this layer or not, it doesn't make any difference. And that's the perfect starting point for us to do color grading because now we can go, for example, into the blue tones and say, okay, I, I want to have, and now let's go back to our little color circle. I want to have some, let's say some yellow tones, brownish tones in the shadows. So I just take blue a little bit more down and now we will get those tones in the shadows. And then I can say, okay, I want to have some greenish tones or some the highlights or maybe some reddish blue tones um, or I can take down the greens again. So I'm very, very, very flexible now and I can perfectly color grade my image however I want it and I can experiment a little bit and if I mess it up, I can just go back to this little preset I saved myself and be neutral again. Now, if you want to save a preset like this, just click on this little burger symbol, whatever it is here, and then click on save curves preset. And that's where it. You have your own preset there. You can name it however you want it and you can start from there. Okay guys, now that's really everything. What you need to know, start with a little S curve and experiment a little bit, try different styles. And if you found a cool style, just save it as a curve and you can create your own presets and then you can just click on those presets and for example, have a cool look instantly without doing anything. And it's just one layer. The curves are absolutely amazing. Never forget this and have fun with them. All right, guys, that's already it. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a little bit. And if so, I would be very, very happy if you help me somehow, however you do it to grow this channel a little bit. And I would be more than happy to welcome you and maybe some of your friends in the next video. See you there.